All right, so let's talk about procedures in dermatology, or let's talk about biopsy, or skin biopsy, and the types of techniques. So regarding skin biopsy, uh, simply put, skin biopsy, what is it? You basically do a biopsy from a skin lesion. It is a diagnostic procedure in which you take bits and pieces of the skin, or let's say the skin lesion, and then you send it to the pathologist. Now, in dermatology, typically, uh, you have a dermatologist, and he has his best friend, which is the, the pathologist. And there are pathologists that are general pathologists, and the more specific type, the subspecialties you'll find in dermatology, which is dermatopathologists. So the pathologists in general are the dermatologist's best friend. Uh, the dermatologist, in general, their purpose is really, or any GP, or let's say a dermatologist, their purpose is that if they see a patient with a lesion and they suspect this is psoriasis, for example, they can take a biopsy from this. And this biopsy will just confirm the diagnosis for this patient. Uh, for this patient. They can confirm if this is cirrhosis before I immediately assume this is cirrhosis and I tell the patient the treatment, I will take a biopsy and I'll send it to the lab. And my best friend, the pathologist, he'll tell me the result. Is it positive for cirrhosis or is it negative for cirrhosis. So that's the purpose of skin biopsies in general. They help in diagnosis or they help in confirming diagnosis. Or well, let's say when we have a lesion, for example, we have a lesion like for example a black mole or a nevi and we don't know whether this this mole is it benign or is it malignant. Could this mole be melanoma or could this be a simple case of a uh, nevi, a benign collection of nevi. So to differentiate between a benign and a malignant or in some other skin diseases like pigmented basal cell carcinoma that resemble melanoma, in order to confirm, I take a biopsy, send it to the lab, and I will have my diagnosis. So a skin biopsy can help in confirming your diagnosis, whether it's something you're suspicious of or if it's something you want to be confirmatory at. You want to confirm it 100% at. For example, all right. So that's the purpose of skin biopsy. So you can take a skin biopsy, and there is a couple of techniques. There's around six techniques in which you can acquire a skin biopsy. Uh, then they can vary. They can be a shave biopsy. You can take a biopsy via punch. You can take a biopsy via excision. You can take a skin biopsy via electrodesiccation and curettage. You can take a biopsy via freezing, chirotherapy. So these techniques we're going to be talking about, these are six different types of six different types of techniques in which you can take a skin biopsy. All right, and we're going to take we're going to talk about each one of them. What is the difference between each of them, as well as the indication for each and every single one of them? Okay. Now, in general, before you do a skin biopsy, you have to be aware of a couple of things. Before you do a skin biopsy, you have to make sure the specimen of skin, the skin lesion, the specimen you're going to collect is going to be adequate. You're not going to collect too much because that will be cosmetically disfiguring for the patient. You're not going to collect too much, but you have to collect just enough to be giving to the pathologist. All right, that's number one. Number two, you have to make sure you have to choose the appropriate site. Where will you collect the biopsy? And you have to determine if you're going to collect a biopsy via whichever technique here, you're going to make sure which site is going to be preferable for this patient, which site is sensitive, and then you proceed, which technique I will do for this patient. And then before I do the biopsy, I put this patient under local anesthesia, for example, because I can't just do a biopsy immediately. It will be painful for the patient. And besides that, you also got to make sure you educate the patient, especially when most biopsy techniques, they involve suturing. So you got to educate the patient when you're going to come back so we can remove the suture and so forth. All right. So these are all of the things that you need to keep in mind as well before you do a skin biopsy. All right. So now let's talk about the different techniques involving uh, skin biopsy. All right. The end result is we take the specimen, we give it to the pathologist, and the pathologist will return to me with the results. All right, so now let's talk about the first type of technique in skin biopsy, which is shave biopsy. And again, before we talk about the different types of technique, one last thing I want to mention, we want to revise the anatomy of the skin one more time. So we have the skin here divided into multiple layers. The first layer is the epidermis, 
followed by the dermis and the dermis is subdivided into superficial and deep dermis or they sometimes divide it into papillae dermis which is another name for superficial dermis and then you have reticular dermis which is your deep dermis so s for superficial dermis d for deep dermis and the deep dermis those are the dermis that actually contain your blood vessels your glands your nerve supply your sensitive side essentially and then deep below the dermis you got your subcutis layer I want to revise the anatomy quickly because this will determine the technique. There are certain types of techniques in skin biopsy where the penetration will be different. How deep will, my, will, be, how deep will be my penetration for a skin biopsy? Will I just involve the superficial dermis to that extent? Will I just involve up to the deep dermis or up to the subcutis layer? So the penetration, how much, how much layer of the skin am I going to collect? is going to be according to the skin biopsy technique that I will choose, okay? So now that we got that out of the way, now let's talk about each type of skin biopsy technique. So, regarding shave biopsy, shave biopsy is a skin biopsy in which you collect your specimen via shaving. And the idea behind shave biopsy, the idea behind it is I will take a part of a skin lesion. I have a skin lesion. Let's say this one right here. I have a skin lesion here and I want to take a biopsy and this biopsy will extend up to the level or let's say down to the level of the superficial dermis. Okay, so it's going to extend down to the level of the superficial dermis. So I'll take part of the epidermis and part of the superficial dermis while not touching the deep dermis, okay, which was containing your V A N, your V meaning for vein, A for artery, N for nerve, your blood vessels on your nerves, okay? So that was the shape biopsy is. I'll take a sample of the lesion down to the level of the superficial dermis, okay? And the idea behind shape biopsy is that it's convenient, right? It's convenient. You take a super you, you know you take a relatively superficial part of the lesion and here typically there will be no there will be no scar or let's say there will be a scar but there will be no suturing involved. You don't have to do any suturing. This this can be very convenient especially an individual who is at work and who's at work and he's using his hands a lot. Let's say a patient has a lesion in his hand and he wants to go to work where he's a computer guy. He's going to be typing at his computer and using his mouse a lot. So he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to have a suture in his hand that will hinder his work. So you might take a shave biopsy where this is a type of biopsy where you don't have to suture the wound. It can heal on its own without a scar usually. All right. So this is what shave biopsy is. It's very convenient. You can take it up to the up or not up down to the level of the superficial dermis. And how do I take this part of the skin? You can take it via two instruments in shave biopsy. You can take what is known as a derma blade. You can look up pictures of it, where I can take parts of the skin via a derma blade, a blade that can take me part of the skin down to the level of the superficial dermis, or I can use a scalpel. I can use a scalpel and I can take a part of the lesion down to the level of the superficial dermis. And again, once I take that part of the lesion, I can send it to the laboratory, all right? And they will give me the, and the pathologist will give me the result. And the patient can go without coming back for a follow-up where I have to remove the suture. Because in this type of biopsy, I don't need any suture. This patient can do whatever he wants. So if a patient does not want to come back for a suture or a patient is highly active in his job, this can be very beneficial and it's also very beneficial in cases of areas where you have a skin area where it's very sensitive for example if a, if a person has a lesion in his face in the cheek right here it's going to be very sensitive right this is a very sensitive area so in that case in a very sensitive anatomical area such as a lesion in the face or in the cheek i can do a shave biopsy i can take a shave biopsy here and this is the only indication where it's mostly not convenient but for a medical purpose because if I take up for example something known as a punch biopsy or I go even deeper if I take a punch biopsy in the cheek there's a very sensitive area the patient may not tolerate it so in a case of a sensitive area especially lesion on the face I can use a shave biopsy because it's relatively superficial I can take a lesion and take out up to the or down to the level of the superficial dermis and I can take this lesion, I can take it out with either with a derma blade or with a scalpel. Okay? 
Now, the thing about sheet biopsy as well, you want to take not just the abnormal skin, you want to take also the normal skin. Basically, in shave biopsy, since I'm going to be taking really a superficial part of the skin, I'm going to take the lesion and I'm going to take the normal perilesional skin. Basically, if I have a lesion here, I'm going to take a biopsy or a shave biopsy. I'm going to take a shave biopsy from this lesion and I'm also going to take a biopsy surrounding this lesion, this perilesional skin. This perilesional skin will be normal and the lesion I took a shave biopsy will be abnormal. The purpose behind this is that since I'm taking a shave biopsy at superficial level, at the level of the superficial dermis, I can send these pathologists a specimen of a normal skin and a specimen of a abnormal skin. So I can compare between the two. What is abnormal and what is normal. All right, what is abnormal and what is normal. So that's the idea behind chain biopsy. I can take two specimens. One abnormal, which is the lesion itself, and one normal, which is peri-lesional skin. The normal skin surrounding this lesion, okay? So take it off, scrap it at the level of the superficial dermis, that's the level of the superficial dermis via derma blade or a scalpel, and there you go. I'll see the results from the pathologist. And here are the uses of shave biopsies that we mentioned before. I can use it in cases of sensitive areas of the skin, and I can use it for cosmetic reasons that we mentioned before with the guy with the job or a guy who doesn't want to come back for a suture, all right? And again, there's no suturing involved in shave biopsy. So now that we've moved on with shape biopsy, now the remaining techniques are gonna go very, very quickly. You're gonna be very, very easy. They have the same concept, okay? Now let's talk about punch biopsy. Now punch biopsy is basically shape biopsy. I'm gonna take a biopsy from the skin, but I'm not gonna stop at the level of the superficial dermis. No, 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 no. I'm gonna take a part of the skin down at the level of the deep dermis. All right, as well as the subcutis layer. So I'm gonna be taking it in this region especially, all right? That is what a punch biopsy is. It is a skin biopsy in which the technique involves taking part of the lesion of the skin at the level of the dermis and the subcutis layer. We want even deeper, all right? And how do we take that part of the skin? Not via a shave, not via derma blade or scalpel. We take it in the form of a punch. And what is the meaning of a punch? Well, we have an instrument like this one. You can think of it like a cylindrical cookie cutter. We have an instrument, all right? We have an instrument like this marker right here. This instrument, we will put it in the lesion, all right? We will put it basically here on the lesion, okay? And basically, it will act like a cylindrical cookie cutter where I will put it inside, deep inside, at the level of the deep dermis in the subcutis layer, and then I will rotate it around, all right? I'm gonna go rotate this thing around until I get my specimen, until I get adequate amount of specimen. Once I get adequate amount of specimen while I'm rotating this thing around, like a cylindrical cookie cutter, I take it out and I send it to the pathology lab. So that's the idea via that's the idea from punch biopsy. So what are the uses of punch biopsy in that case? Well, first of all, punch biopsy is much more superior than shave biopsy because you're taking more layer of the skin. You're going even deeper and this can be very beneficial, especially in a variety and variety of dermatosis or skin diseases, especially when you have skin diseases that are inflammatory and they involve the layer of the deep dermis or the layer of the subcutis layer, for example. Or when you have a case of for example, melanoma. In melanoma, you can take a punch biopsy because melanocytes, they tend to be even deeper. So you, take a, you can take a bunch biopsy and send it to the pathology lab. So the indications of punch biopsy can be deep-seated lesions, deep-seated lesions, such as those like melanoma, such as those in psoriasis. We can take it in the case of psoriasis. You can take it also in cases of coronic eczema, especially inflammatory diseases where they're deeply seated and I can take a punch biopsy directly and it will be much more efficient than cases such as shave biopsy, all right? So that's the really the uses of punch biopsy. If you want to think of a skin biopsy, think of punch biopsy first. Unless you're going to be taking biopsy from a sensitive area, then in that case you can think of shave biopsy or for cosmetic reasons, all right? So the better one by far, it's punch biopsy. And in this one, this involves suturing, of course, because you're taking, a, you're basically 
taking a part of the skin or you're taking literally a deeper layer of the skin in the lesion at the level of the deep dermis, the subcutis layer. You're going down deep, so of course that will require suturing, okay? And that will be the same message for all the remaining biopsy techniques. As you go deeper, you basically gonna require suturing. Unlike shave biopsy, which can't stop at the level of the superficial dermis, where you go deeper to extract your skin lesion at that level, okay? We finished with the punch biopsy. Let's go to the next one. The next one is excision and excisional biopsy. Now this is a biopsy from its name. I can remove an entirety of a specimen of a skin. I can remove full thickness specimen of a skin completely. So if I have a lesion right here, I can, I can do excision. I can just remove it completely, right? So I can use whatever. I can use whatever instrument to excise that skin lesion completely. And that can be very useful, especially in cases of melanoma. So if a person has a case of melanoma, confirm melanoma, the treatment for melanoma, besides chemotherapy in extensive tissue involvement, is excision. That's, the, that's the, really the therapy for melanoma. You have to do excision. You have to remove the skin lesion completely. The same goes for basal cell carcinoma. The same goes for squamous cell carcinoma. One treatment option for really skin cancer in general is once you discover this is a skin cancer for whatever reason that might be, once you discover this is skin cancer, you can remove the lesion completely via excision. So that's the purpose behind excision. And of course, after you do your biopsy, you do suturing for the wound, all right? So that's what excision biopsy, what is it used for and what is the idea behind it anyway? Okay, you can also use it in cases of dysplastic nevus, which is basically before the malignancy. Dysplastic nevus meaning you have an abnormal, abnormal moles or abnormal nevi that are having an abnormal appearance. So they have a high chance of transforming into skin cancer. So if you have a case of dysplastic nevi, multiple abnormal black moles, then you can remove them via excision before they get converted into malignancy later on. And they can be used also in cases of epidermal cyst, for example. You can also use them in cases of epidermal cyst, for example. So these are indications of excisional biopsy in general, Yanni. Yeah, these are indications that you can use them for. Now that we finish with excisional biopsy, let's go to the next one. The next one is electrodesiccation and curatage. Electrodesiccation means you take like an instrument, like this instrument right here. In this instrument, it really conducts electricity. Basically, if I want to remove a lesion, reserve by excision, if I don't want to remove a lesion by excision and I want to really burn it via electricity, I'll do electrodesiccation. I can remove a lesion via electricity. So I have an instrument that transmits, that transmits electric current. I apply it on the skin lesion and I will burn it. If it appears again, I will continue to burn it over and over again until it removes completely. So that's the, the meaning behind electrodesiccation, all right? And this can be useful, especially as a treatment option in cases of squamous cell carcinoma or basal cell carcinoma, or when you have gross-like or benign gross-like warts. So in that case, you can use electrodesiccation or you can do curatage. Curatage like this instrument right here. You have an instrument like this one right here where it holds into a skin lesion. This curatage means you just have an instrument that basically holds this lesion right here very tightly and then it starts to remove it. So that's the meaning of a curatage. You have an instrument right here surrounding the lesion in the red color and then it starts to remove it directly. So this is the meaning of a curatage, basically similar to excision, but not exact. Here you don't do it directly. Here you basically hold the lesion tight and then you start to remove it. Boom. Instead of removing it directly as it is. So that's the meaning of curatage. So together they become E, D, and C. Electrodesiccation and curatage. Either you remove the lesion via an electric current, electrodesiccation, and then you constantly burn and burn until it disappears, or you constantly shave off this lesion until it disappears via curatage, using an instrument that holds it tight. Now, these are the uses, the same are the uses for both of them. And now we finish with this specific type of skin biopsy technique. The next one, and really the last one, is chirotherapy. Now, chirotherapy from the name is freezing. 
I can use a canister, for example. I can use a canister that emits spray, for example, or I can use a forceps, or I can use a cotton bud that contains liquid nitrogen. Basically, a freezing substance that can destruct the lesion. So instead of me removing this lesion directly, for example, or instead of me using electricity, or instead of me using an instrument to hold it together, or instead of me doing a punch biopsy, or instead of me doing shaving biopsy, I can remove part of the skin for investigation in the form of freezing, in the form of freezing the lesion, chirotherapy. And they come in a variety of forms. It can be a spray, it can be a forceps or a cut and butt. But I can use liquid nitrogen that can destruct some of the skin lesion and I can use some of it to basically take it for investigation. But this one can also be mainly therapeutic as well. Chirotherapy is mainly seen as therapeutic where I can distract some of the skin with cold, with a freezing substance known as liquid nitrogen. And this chirotherapy is uses has a lot, a lot of uses for chirotherapy. And they, and they vary from, and they vary from benign lesions, BL, pre-malignant lesions, PML, or actual malignant lesions, ML. So chirotherapy, it's mainly therapeutic rather than diagnostic. And they have a lot of variety of uses where we can, we can destruct the skin lesion with cold, with liquid nitrogen in the form of spray, forceps, or cut and bud. And what are the uses of chirotherapy we want to know? Well, I went by the letters. So let's start with the benign lesions. What are examples of benign lesions in which chirotherapy is indicated? Well, viral warts, V, S for sebaceous keratosis, Another S could be, uh, for example, sebaceous hyperplasia. The, uh, the next S, for example, could be, again, another variety of sebaceous keratosis, for example. And another one is M. M is for milia. Milia can be resolved by chirotherapy. And the other M could be molluscosum contagiosum, which is basically a skin infection that is complicated in immunocompromised patients or let's say specifically patients with HIV. HIV patients may present with a skin infection known as Molosocum contagiosum. I probably butchered the spelling, but that's what it is. Basically patients with multiple popules behind the ears. You can look it up. But these are indications of chirotherapy. They can be given in benign skin conditions, such as viral warts, sebaceous hyperplasia, sebaceous keratosis, milia, as well as molosocum, Molosocum, I could put it out. Molosocum. Molosocum contagioso, which is a skin infection in regards to HIV among immunocompromised patients. So these are indications of benign lesions with chirotherapy. So what about pre-malignant lesions? AA. You have actinic, actinic shellitis, as well as actinic keratosis. Basically, actinic shellitis means you have inflammation of your lips. Shellitis, inflammation of your lips due to exposure to the sun. So exposure to the sun for a long period of time could damage the skin. You might have actinic, actinic shellitis, shellitis, and in that case, chirotherapy can be indicated. Another A is actinic as well. It is actinic keratosis, in which parts of the skin can be damaged in the form of scales. There can be scaly plaques in the skin due to ultraviolet ray damage from the sun. From exposure to the sun for too long can lead to skin damage, and that can lead to actinic keratosis. And in that case, chirotherapy is also indicated in that condition as well. This is for pre-malignant lesions. Of course, pre-malignant meaning actinic shellitis, actinic keratosis, they can eventually progress into squamous cell carcinoma, for example. Now, the malignant lesion indication for chirotherapy Chirotherapy can be indicated in malignant lesions, such as the case of, most infamously, superficial basal cell carcinoma. A specific type of basal cell carcinoma, there are four types. One specific type in which chirotherapy can be indicated in is superficial basal cell carcinoma. This is a specific type of basal cell carcinoma that resembles eczema or dermatitis in clinical presentation. And also, other indications of chirotherapy, you'll see it too, in squamous cell carcinoma as an option, for example, in other variety of conditions. But these are the infamous ones, in benign lesions, in pre-malignant lesions, and in malignant lesions. VSSMM, 
AA superficial BCC basal cell carcinoma. So now we finish with all the six different types of techniques where you can acquire a skin biopsy. Most of them are diagnostic, but some of them are mainly used for therapeutic purposes, like chirotherapy as well, where you can really use it in the case of therapeutic purposes, really mainly therapeutic purposes. But you put it as part of skin biopsy, but you mainly use it for therapeutic purposes, chirotherapy, and we mentioned the indication for them as well. So this is very much for today's video and regarding the really procedures, some of the procedures that are used in uh, dermatology, and one of them is skin biopsy, okay? That's pretty much it.